Hello and welcome to Nelson All Over Cards. My name is Nelson and it is that time we're doing another deck factory where we're going to dive in to a specific card and build a deck around it. Now I did let the YouTube members vote on the card that we're going to be doing this week. I had a couple of ideas and I was like, yeah, let's just throw this up on a poll. And so the members, and if you want to know how you can become a member, that link is down below, but they decided that we're talking about Hard Knocks today. Now, Hard Knocks is a three cost protection attack event that states that you get to deal four damage to an enemy. And if that enemy is defeated by this attack, give your hero a tough status card. Right off the bat, this is an expensive card, especially in green. So four effective cost to deal four damage. That's half the efficiency that we're typically looking for. However, if you do get that triggering effect, you, you do defeat an enemy, and whether that be the first stage of the villain or more likely a minion, you get a tough status card. That's nice. It's still not my favorite efficiency in the world, but it is a nice kind of thing to kind of be building around. One thing to note here is that it does also give protection some nice minion control. And so I think we're paying for that minion control, which is typically an aggression role. We're paying a little bit extra for minion control outside of aggression. So that's where some of that cost comes from. I am rarely looking to use this card to throw damage at the villain. You can, you absolutely can. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, but not usually. Maybe if I can take out one stage of the villain, I will do that. But a lot of times we need a lot of minion control, especially in our solo games. And this is a way to do that in green. A lot of protection builds can get swamped by minions. And so if your hero kit does not have an answer, green doesn't have a lot of options for you. And so maybe we are forced to kind of consider hard knocks as an option, especially in those high minion scenarios. Another kind of consideration to be thinking about with hard knocks. A lot of the times, if you're playing like a perfect defense build, you can be stuck with only three to four cards in your hand going into your hero phase because you played a defense event. If you don't have any generators on the table, that takes probably two cards out of your hand. Maybe you get to draw a card with unflappable, but a lot of the times you don't have a lot of money to pay for cards during the hero phase when you're playing green. So we have to adjust the play style if we're going to make hard knocks work work can be kind of tricky. So what is it good for? I don't, I really like hard knocks for heroes who do not want to use their basic defense. So if we can get a tough status card that blocks a lot of different villain activations, right? Unless they have piercing, unless we're going up against crossbones or something, God forbid Ronin, right? Unless they have piercing tough status card is getting more and more valuable as the game progresses because of the rising prevalence of steady and stalwart villains. A tough status card blocks a stalwart villains attack. You can throw a tough status card at a Thanos attack and you are good. So getting that tough status card, the stock of tough status cards is rising as the game progresses. And if we're not wanting to use our basic defend, this is a way that we can stop one of their activations. So if we use the tough to block an activation, that means we still have a basic activation to either attack or more likely in green, thwart. Because green also lacks thwarting. So if we have a hero that has a high thwart potential and a low defense potential, then we can use our basic activations to thwart and use hard knocks or other ways to mitigate damage to prevent damage or to prevent damage coming in. This card does get a little bit better in multiplayer just because there's gonna be more minions around and you can probably find a target. Four damage can get rid of a lot of minions, especially a lot of the guard minions out there in the game. So if you can call on an action or if your teammate can call on an action, you can utilize hard knocks to take out a guard minion, clearing the way for them to attack the villain, go face with that villain, and you also get the tough status card. So. If you're running green, a lot of the times you probably will want to be in hero form, especially in like multiplayer, because all of your triggers are off hero form. And so you can probably time it right so that you can call on the action to take out a minion and let your teammates do what they need to do to take the villain. Last thing that I want to call out here is that it would be kind of fun to build this card around Warpath, which is one of our new protection allies, because Warpath allows you to play a hero action after they defend. They do have toughness as well, so you get at least one utilization out of here, but more likely I'm thinking of this in a multiplayer setting where Warpath defends for the first players, maybe a minion, 
face it, takes that hit, then you can use hard knocks to either take out another minion at the table, giving yourself a tough status card, blocking the villain attack. But the reason that I like this is it kind of gives you two hands to draw into hard knocks. So if you don't get in your hero phase, you can, you know, in the turn, in the phase, I'm sorry, in the phase, draw back up. And if you get hard knocks at that point, you have a war path that you can then use it before a minion can activate, or maybe even get yourself a tough status card before the villain activates you in multiplayer. So those are some of the considerations. I'm kind of curious how you all have approached the card. We're going to talk about some heroes that I think would be kind of fun to run this around, and then we're going to build a deck together. But I think it's a fun, it's an interesting card. And I, I really like these types of cards where they can be situational, either hero dependent or villain dependent. I'm curious how you're running it. So let me know in the comments. Speaking of heroes, what heroes want to run hard knocks? The, the first thing that popped into my mind was Colossus, right? Colossus really likes toughs. This card can give you a toughs. He does have a good number of ways to get them in his kit. So this may be just a, another way that is getting more toughs, which Colossus can struggle with in specific scenarios, especially high minion scenarios. So if you're looking at running Colossus in a high minion scenario, you're losing a lot of toughs, especially if you're taking a lot of those minion attacks. So this could be a way to kind of offset that, right? You can kill those minions and get another tough back, which they stole from you earlier in the game. So it could be somewhat scenario dependent, but I kind of thought Colossus, I usually don't really like to run Colossus in green though. Next thought was like Thor or Valkyrie would like this because their ability to find minions, especially like Valkyrie, because she can use Chooser of the Slain to get a minion, which she can easily then kill with Hard Knocks. She gets the card draw. And so you're kind of offsetting the high cost of Hard Knocks with that plus two card draw. You can then take out the minion. You do have to have stars aligning there because, right, you have to have Chooser of the Slain. You then have to have Hard Knocks. There has to be a minion. It, like, so that can be kind of tough. Thor with this defender, you can go get uh, a minion, draw two cards, remove threat, and take out the hard knocks. So I was kind of thinking around that realm. The the last hero before we dive into the hero that we're actually building for is Miss Marvel because she has Embiggen, and this is a card that you can increase an attack event by two. And so if she embiggens the hard knocks, you can kill minions up to like six health, which is if there is a minion that you're targeting with hard knocks that is over six health, then you have to probably have another solution to that minion regardless. And so you could probably set it up so that that six damage does actually defeat the minion, assuming that you put some damage on it before. And this is a very similar path to the path that we're taking today, which is Gambit. So we're going to be building a Gambit deck, utilizing his charge and throw to card abilities in order to increase this to get that perfect efficiency for hard knocks to get our tough status cards with a little bit extra tricks. So we're going to go down to the table, take a look at the Gambit deck, and yeah, let's go. Welcome to the table. So fun fact, I just recorded this entire thing before hitting record. So here's take two. But this is the Gambit deck that we are going to be building that is going to be featuring Hard Knocks. Now, the reason that I really like Hard Knocks with Gambit is because of his throw the card ability, where we can spend charge counters, which we can place on Gambit through a lot of his cards, but also just an action every single turn we can to increase the damage output of a attack event. Now, Hard Knocks only gives your... Uh, character that your identity a tough status card if you defeat an enemy and so dealing four damage we can now trigger this off of four five six or seven damage based on how many charge counters we spend and we can pretty much always custom tailor the damage output to make sure that we get that kicker now the tough status cards we're also going to be getting with polaris and established perimeter now i really like tough tough is like I was saying, tough stock is going up with the prevalence of steady installer villains because, yeah, you uh, <laughs> you block the activation regardless of if you um, if they're stalwart. So you can soak that entire thing. Now you do have to watch out for piercing, but there's there are our options there for Polaris and established perimeter. Now, Tough does take priority over any force interrupts, but we are going to be running two force field generators as well. So if we do lose the Tufts or we need it, and we'll show why we may want to be running these force field generators regardless of all of this here in a second. But force field generator, we put it on the table, almost 
just basically for a safety net. There's gonna be a lot of other ways that we're blocking activations, blocking damage coming in, but this is just gonna be a nice little safety net for us going forward. Now, this is only half of it. This deck is kind of meant to go against non-stalwart or steady villains because we are gonna be running some stuns as well. So we've got Iron Fist here, as well as two tackles. Now, this helps us stun the villain. So tackle, you can deal uh, three damage and if you pay for it with a physical resource, then you can stun the enemy. Iron Fist comes in, Mystic Counters, stun enemies. So. We are looking to stun the enemy, and we either have toughs or stuns, or we have Jocasta here to grab natural agilities. Now, there's a lot of damage mitigation here, right? A lot of damage mitigation, and Gambit already has the three defense, he has the force of the generators, he has the toughs, he has the stuns, which is, which is fine, but... He also really wants to be rolling down to Alter Ego because that's where most of his thwarting comes from. And so we're going to be able to, or most of his thwarting comes with like the Creole Charmer and like the Thieves Guild as well as his Thief Extraordinaire ability. So a lot of his thwarting comes from his Alter Ego side. And Protection kind of wants to stay in hero form as long as possible because a lot of your abilities activate when the villain attacks and so if we're flipping every single turn and we want to be thwarting using this then are we kind of shooting ourselves in the foot with all of this damage mitigation no because we are running taunt we're running three copies of taunt here so this card states that the villain attacks you no other characters can defend for you in this attack and then you get to draw three cards this is awesome right because now we can either block with a tough our force field generator or the villain is stunned and we can also get the benefits of flipping down and still getting an activation out of the villain and blocking it with how many stuns and how many toughs this deck generates we're going to want to be using taunt to knock them off so that we can put another one on and get the benefit out of taunt which is three card draw so that's kind of the idea of the deck let's talk about a little bit of the nuances here now, Remy has a lot of Confused with Creole Charmer, but we're also going to be running a... Uh-oh, oh, where'd he go? A Professor X. Creole Charmer confuses the villain if we can uh, remove the last threat from a scheme. And we're going to be running Build Support to bring in the X-Jet, or Superpower Training to bring in his Guild Armor or his Staff. Now, both of these have three threat per player. Established Perimeter has two. And so, I'm not necessarily going and thwarting as hard as I possibly can with these side schemes, maybe establish perimeter depending on how the game state is going and if I actually need it. But a lot of these I'm just sitting out until I get a Creole Charmer and then it's a perfect, um, it's a perfect uh, trigger. So 3-3-2, three, three, that clears every single one of these side schemes which will then confuse the villain or you have an X that can confuse the villain. So you're blocking the activation there. We are continuing to run some allies with Colossus Rogue is our signature ally, one of the best in the game, which, so I, I put her here. And then armor, and most of these are X-Men allies. We are not running uh, X-Men on Iron Fist or Jocasta, but a lot of these that want to be entering play multiple times will also trigger Utopia. Oh, we ran out of room. Utopia, how about that, right there. Utopia allows us to exhaust Utopia to ready another X-Men character. So that could be Professor X, if you are able to play maybe Armor and X in the same round, get a lot of thwarting off of that. If we use our Thief Extraordinaire ability to exhaust, we can flip up ready and then maybe attack with Gambit. If we did have to defend and we're using natural agility, we can ready, flip down, thief extraordinaire. It just gives a lot of options, a lot of options. We do have X bunker. We'll go right there. We'll go X bunker. And so X bunker allows you to choose a identity who has the mutant trait, which is gonna be Remy. And since we do wanna be flipping fairly frequently, and we have three side schemes that will go in the victory display, we get to look at the top three cards and draw a card, lining up exactly what we need. Maybe even a Creole Charmer. That'd be pretty sick. And then the last couple cards that we're putting in here are first hits. Now, first hits protect our toughs. So if we have stunned the villain and we also have a tough status card, we run into the situation where a minion can knock that tough. If we don't have a blocker, we don't have a way to take out that minion. And so first hit allows us to either deal two damage to the villain, probably not going to be using that option as a hero action, but as a hero interrupt, we can... 
When a minion activates or initiates an attack, we can deal two damage to that minion. Now that can be modified with his uh, throw to card ability. And so because this is an interrupt, it actually takes place before the minion carries out the attack. So we can go first hit, maybe pump that up to three or four to take the minion out and then not need to worry about the attack. That's gonna protect our tough status card if we need to. It's also just a nice way to just clear with minions. We're gonna top that off with the doubles and I don't think I have a, I don't think I came up with a name for this deck. Uh, let me know what you think the name of this deck should be in the comments, because, uh, yeah. But this is the Gambit Hard Knox deck, where we are utilizing toughs, we're utilizing stuns to not take damage, play taunts to draw cards, stun, confuse, tough lock the villain, not take damage, and then use our uh, Royal Flushes, our charge cards, to deal a lot of that damage. And so I hope you like that deck. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for hanging out and checking out Hard Knocks. Please share your deck links for the card and I'm looking forward to checking them out. I really do like looking at them. I hope you all have a fantastic week and I will see you all around. Peace.